either side of me, I am fanned by incredible, mind-bendingly good old guilds. And here's the thing, I just want to talk about why are guilds so cool and still so affordable. Now, I understand as soon as I say those couple sentences, the world's going to change for vintage guilds, and it probably should. So, uh, I have two guilds, one on either side of me. Both are Sunburst, both are very similar. This is a 1979 Guild D25. This is a 1981 Guild D35. So both are Sunburst, both are beautiful. Uh, one is laminate back and sides. So, uh, so you can see that curved back on there. Uh, curved back is almost always, unless it's a carved back, uh, a curved back is almost a guarantee that the guitar is actually laminated back and sides. That doesn't actually mean a ton. And this is, a, people are gonna feel like this is sacrilegious. Um, back and sides being laminate is not the end of the world uh, because you just heard this guitar sounds wonderful. Now on the other side is a Guild D35 and this is all solid. So this is a solid spruce top. This is solid mahogany back and sides. Both are square shoulders. Uh, both have iconically big C-shaped uh, guild necks and both sound impossibly awesome and exactly like what you would expect a guild to sound like. Now let's talk about what does a guild sound like. So the guild guitar sound to me, I've owned a bunch of these. I've owned, uh, my first vintage guitar was a Guild D40. My second uh, older guitar was a 78 Guild D25 in a wine red finish. I owned an early 90s uh, Guild D4. Uh, and now I, I don't know if I own Guild. Can I keep this? I have a Guild D55 I've had on loan from Guild for a couple months. And I really, really like that guitar. Now all of them have a quintessential Guild kind of sound. I'm gonna scoot this out of the way. Now what I mean by that is that they feel like they have a little longer scale length. They have these big C-shaped necks. You have to wrestle them. And what I love is they're not incredibly loud, but they are absolutely sweet in their tone. These are the kind of guitars that they are really a an experience. You feel them, you smell them. Uh, you're just, you have to be connected to them to get a lot out of them. Now, I really, really love Guild guitars. Um, like I said, I've owned five of them probably at this point. Six, I had the M20 as well. Um, so both of these are being lent to me from friends. Uh, Mike, over here and Tom over here. Thank you guys so much for... Tom bought this at Chicago Music Exchange and shipped it to me instead of shipping it to himself. That's a good friend. Uh, this video does not happen without the support of my patron. So absolutely thank you. Thank you, Tom, for sending this. If you want to become a patron, if you want to help this channel grow, that's one of the easiest ways to do it. When you hold the guild experience of playing them to a Martin, they're not as loud. That's the biggest thing. Martins tend to be a little louder, a little boomier, just a little more. I mean, they are the extroverts, you know? They are the, uh, they're the loud, confident farm boys. Um, these guitars are more thoughtful, uh, a little more introspective. You have to get to know them. You have to work with them more to get a lot out of them. Uh, that analogy went farther than I thought it was going to be. But um, as someone who's owned a bunch of guilds, uh, when I look at them, comparing them to Martins is really an interesting thing because your brain wants to hold them together, but they're very, very different guitars. They play very differently. The neck shapes are very different. The experience of playing them is very different. Now comparing them to Gibson, this is one thing I've just recently started viewing them more through the lens of a Gibson style guitar, a longer scale, a jazz guitar, a square shouldered thing. Um, to me, Guilds, D'Angelico's, uh, Gibson's, that kind of guitar seems to live a little more closely together and I really like them. So I think that when you play these, because they have a little longer scale length, they don't feel like that springy, bouncy thing that a J45 does, but uh, with these guitars, they are ultimately, they open up your right hand. So uh, these are incredibly fun guitars to play. Now, some of the quick comparisons, this isn't a comparison video, but it is interesting just talking about uh, these two guitars. Like I said, laminate back and sides on the D25, solid back and sides on the D35. Both are sunburst, but the sunburst is very different. So the sunburst on this doesn't quite come up over the shoulders, it ends around the sound hole. This is more of a teardrop. 
This is more, I don't know what you would call this. I mean, it's it's more similar to a two-tone uh, where this one, I mean, they're both still two-tone, but uh, with this, you can see that the sunburst definitely comes up above the sound hole, above the pick guard. Um, you kind of lose some of the definition of the pick guard. Uh, on the D25. Uh, they're also, they've aged differently. And so this one is a little darker even in the center where this one is maintained a little more yellow, a little more golden color. Both are Sitka spruce tops. What's interesting is they both have pretty light colored uh, rosewood, but the D25 actually has a Brazilian rosewood bridge and an East Indian rosewood fingerboard. Uh, and then this is East Indian, both bridge and fingerboard. Now, part of this is just uh, luck of the draw as they're making these guitars. These, I mean, they're effectively the same bridges. Um, I don't think you would get into an ebony bridge, which would be the main difference until you'd spend a bunch more money. Um, both of these guitars are a 25 and a half inch scale length. So they're long. Actually, there might be 25 and five eighths. I'll double check on the scale length and put the scale length in here. Very cool um, guitars. They're incredibly playable. the headstock side by side they both have this iconic cool regal looking crown headstock very cool it complements very well with the gold stencil guild logo in addition to that both have similar style tuners but the tuners are quite different on uh these two on the d25 uh the uh, they're open gear tuners and they're a little more rounded. I mean, they're very round. Uh, so these are comfortable. Now, one thing that I did have to do is both of these, uh, these tuners were very dry. I had to put just a drop of oil on each of these gears. As soon as I did, they came back to life and they turned very well, tuned very well. And uh, so they're all happy and sorted. Now on the D35, uh, these tuners, they're very angular. The, the buttons themselves are very cool. They look uh, Grover-ish, because um, some of the old guilds, especially the D55s and the F55s, would have had the, what do they call those? The Imperial buttons, the three-step, they're very, very cool buttons. Now these don't have that, but they do have, they're, they're somewhere between a tulip and just a totally different shape uh, from Cluson. These are not Clusons, but uh, they're very cool tuners, but they are pokey. They're angular. They're, they're, um, they have some hard edges on them, so they're not incredibly comfortable uh, to tune with, but they seem to work really well. Uh, they have covers on them. They're open gears underneath the covers, but the covers are incredibly cool and art deco. <laughs> brings us to let's talk about Guild in general right now. Guild is the coolest American-made, oldest uh, guitar brand that you can still afford. Um, these were both really affordable, I think under $1,000 for the D25, and then $1,200, $1,500 on the D35. You can find D25s, D35s, D40s, uh, the D40 Bluegrass Jubilee, Everything below the D55s you can still find and they're awesome. Now there are some problems and some cautionary tales that you should hear along the way. My old Guild D40, I loved that guitar and it was terrible. Both of those statements are true at the same time. I loved that Guild for a bunch of reasons because it sounded cool, it looked cool, had a really cool bridge, had a cool headstock. Uh, Guild is just a unique third, fourth option. Uh, from, you will not show up and have another person show up with a Guild, usually. Actually, that's not true anymore. Myself, when I show up with the Guild D55 and then a couple other worship guys uh, at the church that I go to and then a church that our church planted, uh, all old Guild guys, which is interesting and cool. But... Um, you don't usually show up and see another guild. Uh, they're really unique. Now, my guild needed a neck reset. Most old guilds, most old guitars will need a neck reset. But because of the construction and do these have it? They don't. Okay, these you should be able to get away with it. On the D40 and up or the D, yeah, on the D40 and up, it's a three-piece neck or a five-piece neck. And if that's the case, 
uh, doing a neck reset becomes really tricky because the way you get a neck off of a guitar typically is that you, and there are other ways to do this, but the very traditional Irving Sloan guitar repair introduction, the old way of doing it is you take off the 14th fret, you drill a hole through the fretboard, you go into uh, the dovetail joint itself, and you shoot steam into there. When you shoot steam into there, the glue opens up and the neck can come off. You can separate the fretboard extension, bada bing, bada boom. You've got the neck off. You can then shim and move back, reset. But if you have a three piece or a five piece neck and you're shooting steam in there, the same glue that holds that dovetail joint together is the same dovetail, or is the same glue that holds the neck itself together. So it gets tricky. And so sometimes, a lot of times, just people won't want to do that kind of neck reset on it. That's what happened to mine. So in the end, I just had to live with a guitar that was kind of hard to play. And uh, so that's why when I was playing these, I wanted to show you the action. I wanted to show you playing things up higher. I want to show you the intonation. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the closing thoughts on this. Guild guitars are amazing. Uh, and the new ones are incredible. Let me grab, oh, that's how I'll close. Okay, I'll play the new D55 and show you, even though Guild has been owned by a bunch of different companies, their DNA has lived throughout, whether they were in Hoboken, whether they were in Westerly, Rhode Island, whether they were in Connecticut, whether they were in Montana, whether they were in Tacoma. I don't know if they were ever in, Mo in Montana. Anyway, but Tacoma, Southern California, and now with their home with Cordoba in Southern California, um, the DNA has remained. They're incredibly cool guitars, and I think right now you can find the older, cooler ones for not crazy money, and I think we're all gonna look back in a couple years and wish that we would have bought up these kinds of guitars. They're incredibly cool. Um, yeah, if you need help finding a guitar, couple resources. If you need help finding a guitar, the first thing you should do is buy my The Buyer's Guide. This is one of the most helpful resources I have currently that will help you find the right guitar for you, uh, that will help you buy and sell and find guitars and start cultivating the skill set that you need to be a guitar hunter. There are more resources coming. I'm working on, uh, on a full class on how to buy the right guitar. And uh, so that's coming, but until then, check this thing out. Uh, you also, if you want advice from me, my website now offers on the contact page, jeremythegutarhunter.com slash contact. You can find a time on your schedule that works well for you and works well for me. And uh, we can get on an actual video call and we'll hang out, we'll talk about guitars, we'll help you find the right guitar for you. Now, okay, all that to say, let's uh, let's play this Guild D55. That's how we'll close this video. Thanks for watching, I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I love when people find the right guitars. So do it and when you get the right guitar in your lap, you, in your lap? Uh, you cannot help but fill the world with music and friendship. That's just what people do. Uh, we're made to be creative and we're made to connect to each other. All right, let me, uh, let me grab this D55. One of the biggest feats that these guys with Cordoba have done is they have caught the lightning that is in these old guilds. That's amazing. I don't know how they did that. I don't know. See you later.